Today we're gonna be raiding AI generated Magic the Gathering cards. Let's see if this one Zybers. It's Sink Hold. All right, so not Sink Hold, Sink Hold. Gotta hold all your Sink Hold. Land enters the battlefield tapped. We pay a blue tap. Target opponent gains control of Sink Hold and another target player. It's not even until end of turn and these cards are immediately at dangers. We have like someone and target opponent. So I can't even gain control of the person, but I can get someone to take control of someone else for the rest of the game. Oh, and it adds it adds quadruple mana. This is like better than Mishra's factory, but it does come into play tapped. Look, they, they balanced it like that. But if we play this plus, I don't know, Amulet of Vigor so that it can come on come into play untapped, it'll be great. AI was like, four mana is too much. Needs to enter the battlefield tap to balance it. That's right. It's, well, hey, do you know what? It's probably com still commander playable. If you're allowed to have Mishra's factory tap to add three mana immediately, I think we can have a land that comes into battlefield tapped and uh, tap to add four mana. Maybe you, you might even be lost by the time that you can get to untap but with that four mana. Very balanced. If you need to balance anything out, in the AI world, just let it enter the battlefield tapped. Also, give it to your opponent somehow. What's the whole point of paying a blue target opponent gains? Why do I want to give them my sinkhold and another player? It's a weird, weird play. I guess, I mean, so under some circumstances, someone might be a threat at the table. So you're like, okay, we have to deal with this person or we're dead. Uh, I'll give you the sinkhold. You take control of them. Make sure... You don't kill the rest of us with them. All right, moving on. We've got Drake Dinger. Drake Dinger is a black, black, three generic, three, three otter. Whenever you cast a spell with mana value five or greater, creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and gain vigilance until end of turn. If you cast a spell with five or greater, creatures you control, this actually just looks very fair. Help, I see Chandra, or bring the Asher. Help, I see Chandra, I guess not. Not a fan of Chandra, I gotta run away. A little shy of her fiery power. It should be white, but fine balancing. Wrong color. You people and your, like, color pie. I don't know what, I have no idea what's going on with the color pie. Is, is why, vigilant, only white can have vigilance? And plus one, plus one? The flavor is beyond me. I don't know what uh, being a baseball player has anything to do with this, but sure. How does the dra how does that ding drakes? It will ding the drakes by uh, throwing the hitting them with the baseball bat. Not, re not really holding onto this baseball bat very well. It's a weird posture, weird stance, in my opinion. Very doable, very doable. It passes. The elvish mengor. Elvish Mangor is a white, white, one generic sorcery. Choose one. Destroy target artifact. Or you can also destroy target artifact. Or get this. Destroy tar ar target artifact or enchantment in opponent controls unless that spell's controller pays one. We have three alter we have three alternatives to destroying the artifact. And one of those alternatives gives you an alternative. That, that is so bizarrely worded. Um, the AI didn't stop to think. We're so preoc was so preoccupied on whether or not it should. It didn't stop to think on whether or not it could. It didn't stop to think if it should. Yeah, I missed the destroy target artifact AI cards. I guess the AI just hates the artifact. We don't even have a lot of choice here. It is basically destroy target artifact or enchantment and opponent controls unless that spell's controller pays one. So that's funny. Um, if we destroy an artifact with this third mode, our opponent has the option to counter it by uh, paying the tax. So it's like, I'm gonna Elvish Mangor your artifact. And the opponent is like, which one? Because maybe you're choosing the third one. Yeah, the illusion of choice. Although you do have a choice, you can destroy an enchantment, but they have to be tapped out if you're going to make it work. No, I'd rather destroy. <laughs> I'd rather destroy the artifact. Uh, it's honestly, I don't really want to give this a pass, but I mean, it's not breaking the game or anything. Okay, next up, we've got the collared Deathlet. 
Uh, seven, seven mana, eight, eight, Leviathan. <laughs> look at, look at this, uh, image. It says you win. And it looks like it's throwing a birthday party with all these balloons, these hot air balloons. Okay, whenever, whenever Collard Deathlet attacks while you control an artifact and a permanent, you win the game! That's all I need, is I need to control a singular artifact and a permanent. Can I win with just an artifact? Because it is both an artifact and a permanent at the same time. We get, you know, basically double the value. Remove all plus one plus one counters from each creature you control. Create two one one white soldier creature tokens. I love how, like, completely underwhelming that second ability is compared to the first one. All we need is color deathlet, an artifact, haste, and that's it. It's over. I don't even... I guess it's... I guess it is broken... It's seven. Oh, like, hey, question. Is this any different from, like, Crater Hoof Behemoth, where when it attacks, you basically lose the game effectively? All can be zero. You can make infinite, uh, infinite tokens. Oh, I don't. Oh, uh, don't know what you're actually referencing here. Oh, remove all plus one. Oh, you're right. It's a second broken ability. We gotta remove. We remove all the plus one plus one counters from each creature you control. Yeah, we're gonna remove all nothing of them. Straight up nothing. Get that value. All right, there are two broken abilities. So when it enters the battlefield, you immediately make infinite soldier tokens. And then next turn, you attack with a singular artifact and win the game. If this thing hasn't already won the game. It's a one-card one combo. Yeah, I'll remove no counters, thanks. All right, so straight to the ban list. Yeah, it's, it does say you win. Where's the soldiers? Are they in the hot air balloons? You win. You do, do you? Okay, the goblin collector. Collecting quarters around here. It's a land. Tapped out of colorless. Tap, add one man of any color. Spend this mana, only cast creature spells. You may pay three life. If you do, draw what is going on here? We have the, and this is worse than Library of Alexandria. This is like basic, this is Power Crypt Library. You, you get to add mana, you don't have to have any max, a certain hand size. You just tap this, draw three cards. Yeah, you do have to pay three life. I mean, you're gonna have to suck it up. I've made better, how is trusting? Uh, he has been mists contained no matter when it is my word. The Goblin Collector has come to collect, and they'll collect three cards. Thank you very much. You're paying three life. It's only three. And it's only three, you know, I mean, compared to Necropodes, yeah, maybe it's fair. Except this can go into any deck that you could possibly want. Oh my god, I would love to play with this card in Commander. And I have no problem if everyone gets access to it. That's fine with me. What's that flavor text? I have no idea. I've met her, I've made better how is trusting. These 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 sentences are like barely a sentence. This is like when this is like a worst version of when your phone tries to autocomplete its own sentence after you put like one word into it. Yeah, ancestral recall plus mana. Every turn. Stock of wasteland, strip mine, it's going up when goblin collector has entered the battlefield. Trailer Park Boys and the Gumball Machine. <laughs> worst bet, best slash worst gumball machine ever. 10 out of 10 flavor. I don't know what the gumball machine has anything to do with drawing three cards and paying three life. Usually I pay quarters and I get a gumball. That's about it. Straight to the ban list. Okay, Casting of the Faith. It is a black two generic enchantment. Creatures your opponents control get minus one, minus one. That is cruel as... He That's actually pretty damn strong. Whenever you cast a spell from anywhere other than exile... Well, I mean, actually, there's actually quite a few cards that cast cards from exile. You also win the game! Anywhere? So I basically... Okay, Dark Ritual, Casting of the Faith, Mishra's Bobble. I have won the game. Well played. Shall we have another game? It's funny, there's so many of these you win the game cards on the spot. They just turn magic into a... I don't know, it's a game of like who's gonna win the die roll. 
Yeah, there's so many win the game ability. Maybe, hey, maybe in an, an alternate universe, you have to win the game five times to like win the game. So this is like, I won the game once. I gotta win the game twice, three times, four times. I've, hit, I've won the game five times. All right, that's it. That's the match. You have to like win the game five times in a single sitting and then you actually win. We are one step away from the AI just making a card with text, you win the game. Yeah, whenever you attack, you win the game. One mana, two, two, haste. If you attack, you win the game. How many times can you win the game in a single game? Print for the turn one win. Yeah, ma yeah, imagine me making a video about this. All right, they cast, casting of the faith. They played Gataxian Probe, and with that, the casting of the faith trigger is on the stack. Do they have a stifle? They do not have a stifle. And casting of the faith has won. I refuse, I refuse to believe those fingernails ain't popping those balloons. Well, I mean, maybe eventually. Cool, first time uh, live. Love you. Always see every episode on YouTube. Thank you very much, Danny. Thank you for your support. MTG, but the winner cannot use their sideboard. <laughs> Who needs a sideboard with cards like these? So many we. we so many cards just shortcutting to win the game immediately. Okay, we got the Bidstone's Presence. It's a green two generic uh, saga. Chapter one, tap up to three target lands. Interesting. So, uh, I mean, obviously you're not going to be tapping your lands, but you can tap down somebody else's lands on your turn. And then chapter two, you may untap up to two target lands. Is that it? So basically at my upkeep, I have the ability to un, I don't know, get a little bit more use out of my lands. That's it. Because I'm going to untap. Well, you can untap someone else's lands, I guess. This is a really clunky. It's like a really clunky way of, I don't know, siphoning people's mana and also giving other people mana. Sagaisha says, love the AI cards. I see you recommend lots. So I asked, why don't you play with the AI made cards? How? You want me to print these things out? That's like a lot of work. And I said this a million times. If you want to see the AI cards in action, Card Market has a lot of car a lot of videos on their channel. Go check out Card Market Magic. They uh, have a lot of AI card videos and they're great. They're perf they're amazing. So if you want to see AI AI cards in action, uh that's the place to be. That's two extra mana next. I know we're <laughs> It, we're investing three to get two. It's actually really bad value. And I can only use the mana at my upkeep, so I have to use it on an instant speed card. Well, card mar well I don't know. Yeah, Card Market probably stopped doing them, but they still have quite a few videos if, you, if anyone has not seen them before. Um, well, anyway, it's doable. It doesn't break the game or anything. Add read ahead and ship. I don't even think that would do anything. So they spend three mana untap two. It's terrible. What was this about? Oh, oh, I'm not reading this one. Okay, hold on. Is there something reasonable I can read? So for like April Fools, they did a bunch of AI generated Yu-Gi-Oh cards. We'll look at one. We'll look at only one. There's not a Yu-Gi-Oh channel around here. Oh, the text. Three Dragon Balls. We got the Waz Chargurai. It is a fairy effect with no attack or power or, or defense. If a monster you control is destroyed by battle with an opponent's monster and was sent there this turn, you can add one zeros card from your hand to your directly back to your hand. During your main phase, you can special summon one Toon World from your hand. Face up monster. This card can make a second attack during each battle phase double attack and also take a card from your hand put it directly in your hand no stats not functional correction it cannot die that's the way I'm gonna look at this card uh, I'm not sure if it's doable I don't know enough about Yu-Gi-Oh to say so but I'm just gonna say it's Yu-Gi-Oh what's with Yu-Gi-Oh having font size of one tax I don't know this makes it absolute and also their cards are smaller in general very small cards small very pain, big pain to read. They don't like typecast anything in their game. It's just like, like they don't give keywords. They r explain everything. Okay, we got a bird with the world. It is a four mana two two creature. Whenever you cast your 
Whenever you cast your your library, you may exile it. Uh, whenever remove three counters from Bird with the World. If you do, create two one one black worm creature tokens. Chaos ensues. As far as I'm concerned, that's chaos ensues. It wasn't that chaotic, but it was. If I have to cast your your library, uh, I don't even know how to. I don't even know how to cast my library simultaneously. Does my library have a casting cost? Is this like an animate library sort of thing? Animate library, cast the library. Exile it. I don't even want to exile my own library. If I have no library, what are we going to draw from next turn? <laughs> yeah, I think, therefore, I am library. If you're a library, that is. Bit of a take on I think, therefore, I am. You don't have to exile it? Hold on. Oh yeah, you may exile it. You don't have to. I cast my life. <laughs> Force of will! No, oh, no. What have I done? Hulk library goes to the graveyard. Oh yeah, maybe it's a Thassa's Oracle play. Cast library. If it resolves or doesn't, I don't care. It's it's not there anymore. And then I go play the Thassa's Oracle for the win. But if I cast the library, can I still draw from it? If it's in play, I put my library in play. Like, where else would I draw from? Do I have a Chaos and Sue sound effect that isn't dial up modern? Uh, probably not. What do I got here? No, I don't got anything. Yeah, well, maybe I'll update my sound effects. <laughs> Toad's like, it's, Toad's is a simple person. I just want the two black worms. Missing win the game. Hey, hey, not everything can win the game on the spot around here. We gotta work for our wins around here. Bird with the world is trying to do that. Anyway. Not a very intelligible card. I don't even know if it makes sense. I don't even know if it is even playable. We got the stole buttoner. Not... Is it supposed to use double T? All I can see is butt in this name. It's a red, black, one generic, zero, five spirit. Oh, we get to flip a coin for tapping it. If you win the flip, untap stall buttoner. <laughs> but why? Uh, would this combo in some way? It's like we're flipping the coin for nothing. Exactly. Why? What are we doing here? Look how excited. But look how. Look, it's like basically the stall buttoner says, "Look what I can do." I'm very excited about it too. I can flip the coin. If I if I win the flip, I can do it again. If I lose the flip, I'm gonna take a nap. Heads, I flip again. Tails, I go to sleep. Tap and untap triggers, possibly, maybe. Infinite coin flips. If you're, yeah, yeah. If you're lucky, you have to be very, very, very lucky. If you're lucky as first. If you get infinite coin flips, uh, you might as well have bought an app. Uh, you might as well have bought a uh, a lottery ticket. This is hard nerf by Mesmeric Orb and Basalt Monolith. Pirate, uh, Space Pirate from Space says the only way for this card to work is if you already have other cards that would let you win with any coin flip card. But how about with Krark's Thumb? As the name implies, it's stalling. This is actually quite usable in a number of combos. Oh, if, okay. W would you like to elaborate on at least one of them? Just use Frenetica Freed, I guess. I suppose so. Yeah, Krark's Thumb for Rakdos. Can't eat summer mermaid star says can't even be used with Ocon Cinder Spillet as I don't have black. Huh? You're talking you talking about like other cards we saw today? I have no idea what you're talking about. Those don't don't these those don't sound like real cards to me. No instant win! Zero out of ten. There is a red enchantment that wins the game after a lot of coin flips. Alright! So maybe we have a combo on our hands over here. Doable! For the people who like to flip coins. Uh, there's never been a better time to buy a rigged coin than with the printing of Stall Buttoner. We're looking at the one, the Sky Shroud one. It's a red 2 generic 3 2 zombie get cyan. C cyan. The color. Zombie get cyan, but you're red! Cyan's more of like a blue color. First strike flying. Whenever Sky Shroud 1 attacks, you get double energy. Pay an energy, get a colorless. This is actually pretty good. So it's a three mat it's a reasonable three mana three two flyer, and it like basically nets you 
colorless mana every single time it attacks that you can like dump into something else. This actually is interesting. Very doable. Um, so I don't know how many zombies are in red. Such a weird color. Zombies are black, white, this blue. Super color pie break. It's not broken and it's not useless. And it doesn't have haste, so it doesn't pay for itself immediately. Yeah, this is neat. So basically by turn, you go turn one soul ring, turn two sky shroud one, turn three you have like six mana. Maybe broken? Not sure how easy energy is to obtain. Well, easy. This thing makes it. This is an energy generating machine. All right, this is a perpetual energy machine. Especially cards like Gonti's Ether Hearts, possible. Uh, and the call. Can you. Is there any way to go infinite with us? Well, you need infinite attacks, I guess. Thank you very much for the super chat, Mayuki. Is he holding a glass of iced tea? It's possible. I think it's a jar of honey, to be honest. Yeah, it's some big jar. I think it's a jar. It could be. A, it could be a jar of urine. Oh, by the way, for the, with each super chat, we'll look at one extra card beyond an hour. There is Rakdos zombies for the War of the Swarm. Oh yeah, you know what? You're right. There are Rakdos zombies. Okay, cool. We will give it a pass. Hopefully, it's not broken. No, it's a jar of eyeballs. I see. Oh, it could be a jar of eyeballs. Could be a jar of. Could be a jar of anything. Angel winged armored zombie and and says get cyan has no cyan on its body. Uh, maybe there's some light cyan in its wings to some degree. Moving on, we got Azor the Tor Tower. Azor the Tor Tower is a white, 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 two generic, three, three vampire rogue. At the beginning of your upkeep, scry X where X is your life total. Basically, draw whatever you want every turn. Uh, so, I mean, it digs, what, half into your life? Yeah, about half into your deck? Maybe by turn five, you might have lost like 10 life. Then you go 30 cards deep. That's crazy. Oh, I think, yeah, scry 40. Let's go. Or if you gain, if you're a life gain deck, which you might be when you're into the uh, the white color pie, you're gonna get yourself up to 60 or 80 life. Just go through your entire deck for whatever the hell you want. Now this will combo big time with those upkeep trigger uh, cards, where you get like extra upkeeps. Yeah, tutors are cheap, and they're getting even cheaper. Crazy, very crazy in Commander. This is crazy. Yeah, cheaters can now legally stack their deck. This is a perfectly legal card. Stack your deck however you want. And you also, what, you scry... Well, actually, it's not like you can take the top 30 cards and put whatever. You actually have to, like, t look at the top card, put it to the bottom. Look at the top card, look at the, put it to the bottom. It's like one at a time, isn't it? I think? Or is it... Hold on, is it one at a time where you... When you scry two, you look at the top two... I can't remember how Scry works. I don't play with any Scry cards. Or you like look at all of them simultaneously and then put them down at the bottom of your deck when, how, uh, in whatever order you want. Scry axes all at once. Oh god. Is there a catch? Leon says the catch should be that they only get 10 seconds. That would be within the AI world, that's for sure. Basiel says, earlier you asked how to play with AI cards. Join the Robo Rosewater MTG Neural Net Discord. We do we do them like every week. We use Tabletop Simulator. Oh, and Cockatrice. That still sounds like a lot of work. Do you have like an inventory of cards? You have a database? That's a bit interesting. Gets killed by Bolt, fair and balanced. Thank you very much, Miyuki. My opponents will not wait till I finish <laughs> Scribe. It, like, let's be serious. Aren't you just gonna like pick one card, put it on top, and then just put the rest on the bottom in a big chunk? Combos insane with uh, Elegeth. Holy crap. Combos with Approach of the Second Sun like mad. Well, that's that's like a pretty... I don't think we're thinking big enough if we're thinking uh, the Approach of the Second Sun. Oh, I wanted to play A cards on TTS. I didn't know this already was a thing. 
would this be busted in Lord of the Rings Simic Scry Matters? I maybe. Okay, we'll say this card is probably too strong. Very, very strong card. Maybe a little too strong. You can get this out also by turn. You can get this out on turn two with uh what's it called? Lotus. Jeweled Lotus. Infernal Caress! Sounds a bit weird. Blue 2 generic arcane spell. It's got domain. Counter target spell. What does domain have to do with that? Create X11 one, one, uh, white spirit creature tokens with flying, where X is the Haim Green Ring cards mana value. Oh man, they had us in the first half. Draw, But you do get to draw a card at the end of it. Not too bad. Was that last card not legendary? Oh, so you can't have it as your commander. Oh, that's wild. We well, can still only can have it as one of in your deck. You know what it's trying to say? Not really! At the end, it's like, uh, create X. I, I guess it was like X11 one, one white spirit creature tokens with flying, where X is like the domain for each basic land type. I guess it doesn't know what basic land types are. Haim Greenering! For each, for the Haim Greenering's mana value. Oh no, it's actually based on the mana value of the card that I just countered. The Haim Greenering. <laughs> Where X is the Haim Greenerings card's mana value. Is that like the name of a very specific card? It's gonna be no, it's excellent against Haim Greenering decks. There's an A Haim Greenering archetype, Infernal Caress is there. Anyway. Sorry about that, Infernal Caress. It won't be that infernal. Molten Ward. Molten Ward is a blue, green, black, two generic saga. As a saga enters the battlefield, uh, or whatever, it's a saga card. Uh, chapter one, destroy all creatures. It's actually quite fair for five mana. Chapter two, create two one one white human creature tokens with pay two. This creature gets plus one plus one until end of turn. Create a tap power stone to power stone token and untap it. Is that even? Do all power stone tokens come into play tapped, or did we just redundantly? Put the Power Stone token into play tapped and then untap it for no reason. Oh yeah, super fa fair. Absolutely print it. Take it to the printers. I'll buy 20. All other... Oh, did it say that? This creature gets plus one, plus one. Destroy all... Oh yeah, just in case Molten Ward is a creature, you know? Just in case it got, became animated with like op Opalescence or something. So just in case you turn the Molten Ward, if you make it sentient... It'll blow up everything else, not itself. Blind obedience deck, I suppose. Untap tri- <laughs> Yeah, the, those delicious untap triggers. How does it go infinite? Create two wait, wait, creature tokens with pay two. This creature gets plus one plus one until end of turn. Create a tap power stone token and untap it. Oh, does the power stone token- Oh, wait a minute. I don't know what power stone tokens do. Like, I've never been able to tap a power stone token for mana. Each card that makes Power Stone tokens specifies to put onto the battlefield tap, but it doesn't inherently have to enter the battlefield tap. Basically costs one to activate and stacks each turn. You can play tap the Power Stone twice. You need training grounds to make it go infinite? Okay, I will just trust. Uh, create a tap, pa it, like, the cre the, the land comes into, on, to the battlefield taps, like, I don't understand how you guys want to stack the mana, it's gonna enter the battlefield taps, and then it untaps, and then you can just tap it for mana, and you'll get two artifacts, right, because each one of these creatures gets the ability, no, 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 wait a minute, create two 1-1 one, one humans, they have pay two, you get this, you only get one power stone token, it doesn't go infinite. Power stones pay for anything except non-artifact spells. But it can pay for abilities? I'm guessing? We need a rules lawyer here. Power stones can also pay for abilities. Excellent! So basically, this card has the potential to, like, combo off by itself. To keep making, uh, make more power stones. So it, ha it has the ability. No, it does have. The, no, it does not have the ability to go infinite. I don't know what we're gonna do with all these power stones. Like, for crying out loud, we can do nothing with them. Power stones pay for anything except non-artifact spells. Then, then it doesn't sound like it pays for anything. Abilities and whatever. 
Anyway, uh, we're going to thank our sponsor today, FusionGamingOnline.com. The Outlaws of Thunder Junction is coming out with a serious boatload of new cards. Also, some key reprints. I saw Mindbreak Trap being reprinted for the first time. They're reprinting all sorts of stuff in this set. And you can get your cards hot off the presses when you buy them at FusionGamingOnline.com. Why would you want to do that? Well, A, it supports the channel. B, it can support you to get 5% off all your purchases when you use coupon code NIKACHU at checkout. We're also going to thank Manitraders, the premier place for renting Magic cards online. For the online client called Magic Online, where you can play Pioneer, Standard, Modern, Legacy, Vintage. You can play Commander, 101 Commander or 4-Way Commander, Competitive or Casual. And you can play every deck in the inventory of Magic the Gathering's whole card pool when you're running with Magic, magic uh, Mana Traders. Oh, sorry. There are some cards that are not on Magic Online because of rights or something like that. You can, uh, Magic Online couldn't get the rights for it. But it basically has like 99.9% .9 of the cards. And you can support the channel using my Mana Traders link in the description below or save 10% off your first two months using coupon code Nikachu underscore FL0. And now back to wild AI cards. Beyond our belief. Uh, I'll give this a pass. Seems passable enough to me. Yulchin says mana doublers, training ground effects, and token doublers go infinite with it. It's one oh, it's one of these cards. Okay, we got uh Far Fire of the Wise. It's a five mana siege. Um, so Solvier creatures you control have indestructible. Is that something we give the opponent? Oh no, I think it's on the opponent's side, but we, we get have access to it. Then if we destroy it up, destroy it, we get a legendary enchantment. At the beginning of each end step, uh, extra. Discard your hand if you do take it. Take an extra trip. This one, it just goes infinite. The beginning of each uh, end step, I just basically have turns for forever. It's broken. It danger. Infinite turns. The, the, it's by the way, is the front side busted too? I think the fr front side's also busted. Creatures you control have indestructible. Well, that's easy. Your opponent defends the battle, but you still control it. Yeah. So my creature, it's but I, like our creatures are indestructible, right? It says if you do though. Well, yeah. We'll do what? I'm going to choose to do so. I think it's a good line. Yeah, you discard your hand if you do take an extra turn after this one. What, yeah, what a creative way to uh, get infinite turns. Man, I think if you play this card under someone else's control, the whole table will defend it with their life hanging in the balance effectively. Only Solvier creatures have indestructible changelings. Oh, Solvier creatures, that's right. Okay, so it's balanced. Only the soul. We gotta be playing the soul of your kindred, people. Soul of your kindred. Yeah, indestructible doesn't even matter. Well, yeah, I guess we could just try to blast this thing for six damage. Can you discard your hand when you have zero cards in it? Yes. You A, yes, and B, you'll always have a card to draw anyway. Even if that was a problem. You'll draw a card every single turn. Although, well, it doesn't matter. Like, yeah, you can discard your hand. You discard your hand of zero cards. Infinite turns, but you're on top deck mode. Yeah, basically. You know what? I'll take that. More fun, indestructible. <laughs> Another changeling card. You know what? Whatever made up creature type the AI makes, the changelings will always be there to fill that gap. Need the if you do. Opponents could attempt to counter that, and if they succeed, the effect gets blocked? Huh? Opponents attempt to counter that I don't know what you mean by that stall buttoner lives up to the name or oh, you mean like tapping on tapping the thing oh god we got a morphine a morph more morphine sighting I don't know what you mean by that Need that if you do, opponents could attempt so long. At the beginning of the end step, uh, discard your hand. So it goes on the stack. I don't get it. Like, how would they interrupt? What, like discarding your hand? I would still discard my hand of zero cards. And then I would, in fact, discard your discard my hand. 
I mean, it's obviously it is it is a trigger on the stack. Like they can counter it with like Stifle or Nimble Obstructionist or Tishana's Tidebinder or something. Good. If they if, if they interrupt the trigger, they interrupt the trigger, just like anything else. They can they can interrupt. You win the game triggers. Okay. Anyway, this card's busted. Absolutely busted in a changeling deck. We got the Jungle Blade as a red black. Sorcery. Casualty one. Mill three cards, then draw a card. This is fair, right? What is ca I don't even I don't know what casualty one does. Mill three cards, then draw a card. Sounds like decent tack for dredge. In fact, they probably wouldn't even play this thing. There was better uh tack for dredge. The trigger, which is to discard your hand, which is a single action. If that gets blocked, you can't use that effect for that turn. How would you block it, though? Sacrifice a creature with at, with at least one power to recast. Oh, interesting. That is a very interesting card. In fact, dredge players would love this thing. Not bad, ship it. I'm going to, okay, so casualty is casualty N. As you cast the spell, you may sacrifice a creature with power N or greater when you do copy the spell. Cool. So like you can keep with power N. So if I sacrifice a six mana card, I can draw, I'm going to draw six cards. So you sacrifice something with power one or more to copy this. Yeah, something, something of that effect. Maybe this card's broken. It'd be broken in dredge. So Dredge gets like a three power creature out. They sack it. They basically Dredge three times in one shot. Well, I guess it's not that much different from what they already do. No, you don't copy it end times. Oh, oh, you just copy it once. So we just sack anything. Okay, then it's just a very underwhelming and fair card. Very doable. Doable around here. Maybe we'll send my cards to the Urank. Okay, we go back to D Dine, Seal, Disperse. Artifact. Discard a card at completely at random. Untap all non-black creatures. That's interesting. Can I discard a card at random if I have no cards in hand? I'm not sure. Well, I think it looks like it has to be a... I can't tell if I can discard cards that I have nothing. You guys think it's broken? It's a two mana artifact. And you do have to pay something, right? If you do not have, oh no, but like, I, I guess there's some abilities with tapping, like tap, draw a card. You get to discard a card at random, untap it, draw a card. <laughs> Spectral Maniac says no. Think you need a card in hand to discard as a cost, probably. Great, yeah, going straight into the Azami Ar Arcanus of the Omnipotence deck. Our Arcanist of the Omnipotence would go infinite. Yeah, I forgot. I was thinking, like, oh, this is fair with, like, creatures that attack or whatever. But, like, creatures with an activated ability, especially if they draw cards, this would be broken. It'd probably break me immediately. But it's an artifact without a tap. It acts, like, as an endless vigilance. That, too. Still danger, though. It specifies a number of cards to discard. Yeah, a card. Well, it says a card to discard. Wait, it's not even a yeah, it's not even a tap ability. Freginka says if you have tapped ability to draw a card, you have infinite combo. But you might discard some critical cards out of that combo. What if you accidentally discard the Thassa's Oracle, and then your uh, you discard Thassa's Oracle, you discard Unearth, you discard everything. Untaps Manadorks, yeah. Yeah, in addition, so you can actually, like, tap, tap to draw cards and float mana, cast a dis discard a card at random, uh, random to untap everything at once. You could discard a card you needed by accident, I guess so. You know, it'd be, make it fair, if it's, like, discard a card at random, untap all attacking creatures, so giving, it, give, it gives any deck pseudo-vigilance. I think if you have a card that pings an opponent and then a card that draws you the card, you win the game. That's true. That also would work. All right. Busted. Complete. It looks, it looks okay. You know, it's simple, yet broken. So elegant for an AI generated card. Uh, the defeat of the feet 
if you got if anybody gets that there are six toes on this feat classic AI generated art okay sorcery is an additional cost to cast this spell sacrifice a creature defeat of the feat deals X de damage divided as you choose among one two or three targets uh, you may cast any number of spells with mana value three or less from among them without paying their mana cost God in every opponent's triggered ability what one it deals X damage devices you choose so you just kill people in one shot basically yeah X is undefined it could be 10,000 it bro it also at danger these cards are incredibly broken today you basically have to sm you'll smell these feet and then you'll go straight into a coma yeah God is triggered indeed <laughs> You, yeah, God in every opponent's triggered ability. <laughs> God is triggered by defeat of the feet. Feet this. <laughs> defeat this. Kill three opponents in commander. That's basically what this card will do. I choose you three. What's, yeah, where is your God now? Your God is triggered. <laughs> You forgot the reminder text, by the way. Has escape cost. What? Has escape cost is equal to its mana value. Well, it's not particularly important because I don't know why I'd ever, I would ever escape this thing. A card for the future Shin Mag Magami Tensei uh, crossover. Not familiar with the anime. Yeah, I got defeated. A lot of puns around here. That's Chuck Norris round a house kick. The Chuck Norris card. Chuck Norris was so powerful, even God got triggered. All right, we're all in agreement. This card's b busted. <laughs> Completely busted. We got Kazment Dal Dalmon Fleet Naga. I thought Nagas were uh, blue. This is a black, red, two generic, two one ninja. Also, not very Naga like. Uh, trample. Each player puts their head from your graveyard into their library. That is a bit of a head scratcher. Another. You know what? The uh, AI hasn't done a lot of dexterity cards in a long in a long while. Where you know you're like have to tap yourself, tap your opponent, put yourself onto the battlefield. Now it's like you, we put our head from your graveyard back into our library. I can only imagine like leading my head on the table with my deck stacked on top of me, and I have to play from there. Put your library on your head, Jimmy. Oh, so looks at look at the art. Looks like this ninja is about to draw from this person's head. And they're just like, what is going on here? Why is my opponent's head in my graveyard? Put Each player puts their head from... Oh, yeah. <laughs> their head is in my graveyard. If you are dead, you are buried in the library. To be honest, one of the Infinity cards asks you to do so, so print it. Oh, God. Is the AI really learning from the... Uh, what's it called? The... The Unfinity cards. Chaos ensued enough. Well, it's not complete chaos. I mean, I understand what the card wants me to do. It's just impossible. The winds of judge. Those winds will judge you for exactly who you are. You're a three man. It's a three man, three three vehicle with crew two. Whenever winds of judge deals combat damage to a player, its controller creates a token that's a copy of winds of judge very interesting so it deals damage we get a copy of winds of judge we get like so every single time we attack we get another winds of judge it's basically a self manufacturing abomination it attacks and reproduces itself Twilight Duck says, funny story, there's an uncard combo that lets you put your opponent's head and yourself through the table you're playing on. That's weird. Feels like Blood Forged Axe. This can get out of hand fast, but I don't think this is broken. I don't even know how you get out of hand with this thing. For each Winds of Judge, you need like another creature to crew it. Wait, do you need to crew copied to the 
need to crew copy token? Yes, yes, you would. So it, if it makes a token of Winds of Judge, it would be an exact copy of this thing. And it would come to play as a vehicle that you would have to crew. So for each Winds of Judge that you produce, you need like something to crew it. Those vehicles aren't going to drive themselves around here, okay? They don't drive themselves. These are not self... We're not in the world. Not even... These aren't Teslas, people. They aren't Teslas. This is the multiverse we're talking about. Their vehicle technology still in the dark ages. Supplies. Surprised they have vehicles, period. Yeah, you do, so you're gonna have to have a bunch of uncrewed vehicles. You have a bunch of artifacts. Use your artifact. Use your artifacts to win the game with uh, whatever the hell that was called way back in the show. Get a Winds of Judge crewed so it can. <laughs> Crew the winds of judge. That's right. The winds of judge will cr will get inside another winds of judge to get inside another winds of judge. Winds of judgeception. We got going on over here. Do I have a wind? Do I have a good sound effect for that? Which winds of judge is crewing who? Who is the real vehicle owner out of all this? Imagine cr crewing a vehicle from within a vehicle from within a vehicle from within a vehicle from within a vehicle. Yeah, perpetual crewing. And a good question. Hold on. Whenever Winds of Judge deals combat damage, no, I guess it only accounts for the the Winds of Judge at front. We need to go deeper. It's good for anything requiring an activated ability. Fedgeman three says, "Well, Nikachu, uh, have you read Form of the Approach of the Second Son to understand the head thing?" Oh, I forget what it is. I'll just believe you. If you chain crews like that and then untap all creatures, you can attack with all of them using only one non uh, one non vehicle creature. Well, I'll be damned, because don't we have a card like that? We have something called uh, Dinezel Disperse. Discard a card at random, untap all non black creatures. And I do believe that our Winds of Judge is a non black creature. This is the most sensible card I've seen on this show for in a very long, long time. I think it's Zybers. I like it. It's a good conversation piece as well. Alright, next up. We have the Experimental Demolisher. It is a white, green, red, red, black, one generic 6-6 six, six beast. Constellation. Whenever Experimental Demolisher or another enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, choose one. You may exile the top three cards of your library. Until end of turn, until, sorry, until the end of your next turn, you may play those cards. Uh, also, you can put two plus one plus one counters on target creature you control if you do draw a card. Actually, these are both very playable abilities. Not a legendary creature, so for anyone that was looking to play a uh, four color constellation enchantment deck for value. Well, sorry about that. You're gonna have to put it in the 99. Color intensive six drop feels very balanced. Also triggers upon entering the battlefield, but also whenever another enchantment enters the battlefield. Divine constellation. Uh, I think it was the, the way they're defining it, defining it. It's like whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield, you get the trigger. Constellation redefined? Yes. Whatever comes after that dash, that's the new definition for Constellation. Seems a little expensive for the effect. I don't think so. Like, okay, you play an enchantment. Uh, you can exile the top three cards of your library. That's an ancestral recall. Like, what do you want? That's a very, that's a very valuable effect. You can play those cards until your next turn. So you can tap out for an enchantment. You can tap out for this thing. And then exile the top three cards and then play them on your next turn. I think that's ins that is bonkers value. Isn't Constellation even cast? I don't know. That's how Constellation works though? Alright, great. The AI is learning. It's perfect. Well, if no one else has anything else to say, I think it's Zybers as well. That is an easy print from me. You're having trouble getting your seventh land drop. It can help. It can, yeah, it can get your seventh land drop, your eighth land drop. I'm sure it's gonna. I this is the, the type of card I think actually spirals out of control if you tap out for this and it lives. So I think it's very very good. Ooh, 
we have a voter of Sprout. Uh, we have Body Shore. This is a white, white, three generic, four, two dog. Probably is, uh, believes in 420 as well. As Body Shore enters the battlefield, choose a player. Is that it? You may exile another card named Body Shore as you cast the spell. Okay. Uh, when Body Shore enters the battlefield, if it was, if it was Bless, each p opponent loses two life and you gain five life. I'm guessing when it enters the battlefield, we need a player to bless our Body Shore. Everyone was deadly on its minds. Not any, not in any charge, says Cedar Jabamin. It's a good boy. Bless the doggo. <laughs> I'd say bless. We all will bless the Body Shore. We give Body Shore our blessing. That way each opponent, actually the opponent, the opponent giving the blessing loses two life in exchange for you gaining uh, five life. Who would not bless the doggo though? Bless it for being a doggo. Just realized what? He is blessed. Adding more D&D spells to MTG. Is this a D&D card? Type should be dog god. Dog god. <laughs> well, it's a, well, god doesn't need this. Does the god need to be blessed? I think the god blesses. The everyone was deadly on its mind, so Body Shore has multiple personalities, and all of them think everyone is deadly. It's possible. Anyway, okay, cool card. Gets it is gets my approval. Next up, we have uh, Z Zeroth Mana Moro Mana Moro Blade of some sort. Uh, this is a two mana gate. I thought gates are lands. This is an artifact. Creatures you control have commutative upkeep, pay one life. Why would I want to do that? This is self sabotage around here. Then threshold. As long as se well, as long as seven or more cards are in your graveyard, Zeroth Mono Mono Moro Blade. Whatever. It gets plus three, plus three, and has base power and toughness five, five, and gains trample. So, it's a two mana card. Is this something we donate to other people? It's like, I'm gonna donate my Xeroth Mona, Mor Mona Mora Blade to you, and now all your creatures have commutative upkeep, pay one life. It's a weird card. Yeah, donate. It's an excellent donate target. Two mana for an 8-8. Eight, eight. Well, as long as you have seven more cards in your graveyard. And I guess the idea is... This has to be the only card in your deck, and it has an upkeep of pay one. So it has cumulative upkeep, pay one life. So once it's activated, you better kill quickly because it's going to cost one, two, three, four mana in the future. If it's your only creature, it's okay. Or donate. And I guess if you want to prevent, I'm curious actually. So it has cumulative upkeep, pay one life. So it gets a commutative upkeep counter, and then even if I get below threshold, it still has that commutative upkeep counter. I guess it d does it keep going up though, or do I just not put it up because I don't have creatures in play? No, I think it would just get to keep once it gets the counter, it just keeps going up anyway. I don't know enough about commutative upkeep to know one way or another. I don't know if gates would even play to up the <laughs> to get up the gate count. It would give itself the upkeep too. If you don't have threshold, it isn't a creature. Yeah, but well, then it doesn't trigger upkeep on its commutative upkeep on itself. But I'm guessing, like, let's say you have commutative upkeep, and you because you, commutative upkeep is countered by a counter. It's like some sort of commutative upkeep counter. So it gets commutative upkeep one, then commutative upkeep two, commutative upkeep three, uh, and then you lose threshold. I'm assuming commutative upkeep, the commutative upkeep keeps counting up, even though it's not a creature anymore. It is never a creature? Hold on, as long as seven more cards, zero automatic mana bait gets plus three plus three and has base power and the toughness five five and gains trample. Can it attack or is it just not a creature? Oh yeah, it does never actually becomes a creature, so it's just a five five that it's an eight eight that does nothing. It can't even block. If it isn't a creature, it 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 isn't a creature even if it ha gets threshold you need to creature yourself that is weird so i have to go like animate xeroth mono mono mona mora blade 
Kagan with a huge super chat. Thank you very much. My favorite AI generated card I saw on one of these said target player fights each other. Yes. Yeah, I believe I used that as the thumbnail. It was on color because it was green, which made it really funny. You're welcome, Kagan. The good that was a good trip down memory lane. So it's a non-creature with base power and toughness. Yeah, that is weird. I think that I think the value you just give this to somebody, you ship it to them, and it's like their problem now. Then they want to destroy the stupid Xeroth because every creature they have is basically on their way to destroy themselves. So I actually think this is doable, even though it ca chaos ensues a little bit here, with by making it like sort of giving it creature types without being a creature. Look at me, I'm like a five five three three stat plus three plus three statue. That's not actually doing anything. All right, moving on. Mystic Ward. Mystic Ward is a one mana white instant. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to you and permanence you control. Isn't this just like fog? This is literally a slightly power crept fog. Because I can just counter. So I can counter any damage dealt to me and permanent. Oh, but I can also attack someone, right? So I can attack, they make their blocks, and I go Mystic Ward, and I prevent all damage that is dealt to my stuff. Last for- Last forever! Oh yeah, it's not until end of turn. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to you. Oh, that's broken! It danger! One mana, you can't- You can't touch me anymore. Is this a lingering effect? It's power crept. It's power crept. Holy day. Yeah, I know. Everything's power crept today. We're seeing power creep even in AI generated cards. Not until end of turn. Yeah, you gotta pay attention to those things. I wonder if, like, Wizards has this, like, in house, like, digital client that they, they can use to play test cards. And they realize, oh, wait a minute. We didn't put until end of turn on this card. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, holy day emblem. <laughs> holy day emblem. Uh, hot take spoiler, it's coming out in Modern Horizons 3. Fog, to, it's a super fog 2.0. It is forever, it doesn't end. It's a never ending story of never being able to do anything. Broken! What kind of card frame is this? This is like from, this is like a Chandelar card frame or something. Canoptic in Shench it is a zero mana instant with rebound. So we get two of them. Draw, draw three cards. I mean, this is the real April Fool's joke. AI is pulling April Fools on us. Four days too late. You cast the spell from your hand. Exile it as it resolves, and at the beginning of your next upkeep, yeah, draw another three cards. To be fair. This card is super fair in the entire league of cards that we've seen today. Like, in the world of, like, you have, you can, you are untouchable, you prevent all damage dealt to you. In a world where you can scry 40 to get whatever card you want, with so many, like, I win the game cards, Canoptic Inchench is, like, the least of our worries. Oh, you draw three cards? I don't care. No big deal. Holy Ancestral Recall, double trouble. Six cards, colorless, instant, and for free. That's a good price. You can't beat free around here. Original printing of Frozen Frozen Shade just has to pay one black. Not until end of turn. That's caused many arguments back in the day. I have no idea what that was related to. Yeah, draw three cards. Yeah, that's fine. Or draw six cards. That's fine. I'll just win the game instead, in my opinion. If everyone runs this, which they can, it might be balanced. Yeah, it's like it's like the soul ring of drawing cards. That would be interesting, wouldn't it? Rule zero this in Commander. Like it's it's definitely the soul ring of uh, of card draw. Needs to. Oh, come on, come on. We can't let we can't let it be too broken. Storm, no, that's not too much. All right, it's broken. <laughs> A lot of it danger cards today. A lot of it danger. Lord of the High Bridge. Six mana artifact. Whenever a permanent other than Lord of the High Bridge enters the battlefield under your control, you may cast target instant or sorcery spell from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. Interesting. It literally turns everything into a snapcaster mage. No, 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 no. Hold on. You may 
cast uh, in target instant or sorcery spell without paying its mana cost. It's like um, what what is that Titan? It's like a blue Titan. Uh, there is like a Titan out there. It's like six mana, five six flash. And there's a battlefield. Play an instant or sorcery for free. Z I think this is, I think this Zybra's as well. I think this is a super Zyber card. Doesn't say non-token permanent. Yeah, that's true. Other than whenever a permanent, other than Lord of the Hybrid, so like if you replay your whole deck. I mean, yeah, turn token decks into storm decks effectively. You can cast from the graveyard, but it doesn't exile them. Oh yeah. Oh no. Oh no. So you could like keep playing. You could keep playing like cards that make tokens, and the tokens will trigger the card that made the token. Which lets you get infinite tokens and then replay your graveyard, like everything in your library for nothing. Yeah, I was thinking of Torrential Gear Hulk. That's what I was. Thank you very much. All right, so I thought it's Zyber, it danger. It does Zyber though. It's Zyber, it danger at the same time. Frost Titan. It's not Frost Titan. It doesn't exile, so it goes infinite with tokens. Oh, honestly, what are you going to do with all the time? You have to go infinite. Like, you actually have to win the game somehow. Just, like, making infinite tokens is not going to do it. You could die next turn to, like, any number of the other cards that we've seen today. Is it me, or have we? has, has it been the most it danger cards per capita of any? Yeah, I, honestly, it's everything dangerous today. Broken, still prints. <laughs> it's... The last Phoenix. If only it said exile. If it said exile and non-token, I think this would be a really cool card. One raise the alarm and one lightning bolt equals dead. True, actually, yeah. Lightning bolt and raise the alarm would be enough. Alright. No print. No print. What is like the pass rate on cards today? Like 5%? Okay, uh, now we're going to look at cards equal the number of Super Chats. Miyuki Super Chatted earlier, so we will take a look at another card. We got the Send Favel. White, white, one generic instant with Cascade. Counter target spell and draw a card. I love it. So we counter a spell. Wow, this is actually insane. This is actually so supreme value. So it's a hard counter that cascades into a free card, and I also draw a card. It is a, it is a two for zero. Or is it a three for zero? I don't know how to calculate this. I get two cards, you lose one card. So if I add the negative to me, it's like a three for zero. If I understand this correctly. Yeah, this is very serious value. Modern Horizon 7 on its, Modern Horizon 7 on its way. Wait, White could use a few counter spells around here. Best Rhino spell ever, is, it, is there a Rhino in here? We need more Favels, if that's what uh, if that's what they do. White has Mana Tide. Yeah, it's a very weak counter spell, though. Yeah, I was looking at this card last night. There was so much. It's I don't. Know, it's like it's one of the more fair cards here, as far as I'm concerned. No, you. Know, I guess it's a two for zero. So you're saying three for one. I think it's a two for zero because we got the counter spell versus their card. That's one for one, right? And then everything else is gravy. So like we have a, we'll get plus one for the card draw and plus one for the cascade. So it is technically a two for zero, if I understand the math correctly. The one for one cancels themselves out, and then the two extra abilities, like that's uh, that's how we get ahead against our opponent. Could get crashing football. Could get anything really. <laughs> Design is a mess. Design is clean. We can read this card and everything, and we know exactly what it does. Not compared to like most of the cards that we read every day. Fair for command. It's probably fair for commander card. Probably broken everywhere else. You know what? Actually, there is one downside to this card. There's actually a big downside we're forgetting. It is a counter spell. You can't, you can't just cast this card. You literally need your opponent to cast something to trigger it. If your opponent casts nothing, this card will do nothing. Can you even cast non-instance from uh, this cascade trigger? Can you cast non-instance? Uh, what do you mean? Oh, I mean, if you hit like an instant, if you hit a sorcery, yeah, you can cast those. You can cast anything, so long as it's a two, uh, two mana spell or less. Imagine a cycle of favels that have an overpowered keyword, a color pie breaking effect, and card advantage. 
I would, I'd like to imagine that. Bobble it up. Doesn't have to be your opponent's spell, you can counter your own spell. Well, then it's not value. Okay, I play spell, I counter my own spell. I two for zero myself, and then I get like a cascade and draw a card. That's not the value we were looking for. Doesn't work on uncounter sp uncounterable spells? Is that true? Do I need to successfully counter the thing? Can't I attempt? I, uh, I don't, I think it will work. I don't know if I'll get the card draw, but I'll definitely get the cascade. So, so long as I have a spell to target, cascade will trigger first. I'll get my cascade. And then, I don't know if it matters that I counter the spell or not. Receive Favel, Black Instant. Oh, you're making your own Favel cards. You can target an uncounterable spell, you will draw and cascade. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that you can still target stuff. It works on uncounterable spells, they'll resolve, but just not counter the spell. Correct. That's as I understand it. I think this is actually balanced. I think this is cool. I think this is a really cool card. I don't think this is easy to play. Like, you can't force the cascade. It's really good value, but like, you need to hold up the mana. If this is in the metagame, nobody is going to be, like, tapping into this, or not easily, anyhow. Strictly better cancel in white. Cancel hasn't seen play for Eden Eternity. Anyway, I like this card. Broken, but interestingly balanced. Okay, next up, we've got another super chat from Yuki. So we're going to look at Spring Lay Mail. This is a green two generic sorcery. Put all creature cards from all graveyards onto the battlefield under an opponent's control at the beginning of the next end step. That is such a weirdly worded card. So we can't pay, make any use of this. We are donating all creature cards from all graveyards in green for some bizarre reason. Uh, and then we are going to donate it to somebody else. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Why though? Hey, maybe we need help. Give Phage. Oh, good God. That could be a combo. I'm going to give you all the creatures. Well, that's great. One of them is Phage. That's bad. But I have Torpor Orb. That's good. But then there's... Uh, I'll destroy the Torpor Orb in response. That's bad. Political card. Kill the uh, other two for me. I think this is cool. I think it's a cool card. Just loot the phage. Uh, can't be in your can't be your commander. It has to be in your 99. So you and how are you looting it in your black green deck? I guess it could be a sim. Uh, it could be a Sultai deck or a Jund deck. Okay, give everything to one player. Kill the player. Exile all of them. Overpriced Leyline of the Void. <laughs> Soft feathers like bless the good doggo. Print it. You can tell who's like 30 minutes behind the stream. Hello, Soft Feather from the future. So all creatures they get would be exiled after they lose, so you can't reuse it. Um, is that true? They get them under their control, but like, wouldn't they lose control of them? I, I don't know the commander rules very well, so if I steal someone else's creature, it just goes to exile when I die. Is that how that works around here? It's not even in Zedru colors. There, it's a, look how balanced it is. Yes, in multiplayer, they would get exiled. Okay, cool. Is 720p the normal resolution for the stream? Yeah, it is. Uh, mostly because, like, it lags like crazy if I uh, go to 1080p or higher. Not based on my internet. Based on your, everyone else's internet. So I get less complaints about the stream quality at 720p. Well, it sounds like it's not going to the Urank. It's bringing everything out. It's bringing everything else out from the Urank. The fleshes will be reached. The fleshes will come back to the battlefield, and they'll reach one one player. Look at this. It looks like there's an absolute party going on over here. We're bringing it. Spring lay mail. Everything's coming out. Hear me out. Bless Miss Act plus repercussion plus this card. Anyway, uh, I think it's cool. I don't think this is anything strictly broken. I mean, if you loot, phage, get this thing on the battlefield, 
uh, like cast this thing to put give it to somebody. I think that's perfectly fair. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay, next super chat from Kagan. We will then look at Jidhel Sever Blood Cursed, a three mana two two human cleric. Pay red Jahail Sever Blood Cursed gains Death Touch until end of turn and gains one mana. Tap target player creates a 10 11 color sphinx spirit creature token with this creature's power and toughness are each equal to the number of cards in your hand i thought it was a 10 11. and now you're telling me it's as big as the number of cards in my hand what's the point of this it, it, it you pay a red to give it the ability to get the ability so i pay a red to get death touch and then have the ability to pay a colorless and tap it so I can give give some a creature that's a 10-11, which also happens to have a power and toughness each equal to the number of cards in their hand. It makes no goddamn sense here. It's a 10-11 if you dress it down? I guess so. Chaos ensued a little bit over here. It's 10-11 because in case it gets affected by negates, I suppose so. Needs an enchantment that removes abilities. Base power and toughness is 1011 if it loses abilities or something. I guess, I, you know, I don't know how to interpret this damn thing. I don't even want to understand it. It's a stupid card. Three mana creature. I don't even know why it has death touch for even a single red. Captain Rumia, thank you very much for your super chat. Finally caught one of these at work. Just don't make, make sure your boss doesn't see you uh, watching AI-generated cards. Imagine trying to explain that to your boss. What are you doing? I'm watching this show about AI-generated Magic the Gathering cards. They try to read this. It's just a bunch of gibberish. Honestly, to an outsider, uh, AI-generated cards and real Magic cards look the same. Morgoth, the Party Worm. It's a blue-blue, six generic, seven-seven, legendary enchantment creature. It's also a plant. Uh, all slivers have at the beginning of the end step sacrifice this permanent. Oh, we have sliver hate. That is wild. Um, also, a huge hate to the changeling decks. Now, fine, we have chain. We have something that brings balance to the changelings. Yeah, this is definitely the best. This is worse than plague engineer. They'll mark this day as the worst day in the history of the slivers. The Morgoth Party Worm coming to eat slivers. Eat slivers for breakfast. Yeah, not your Morophon. Morophon going down. <laughs> N-tat, uh, uh, N Tatsuto says, this is so Zybers. Sounds like somebody is up against in a sliver metagame. N99. Boss, what are you doing? Underling mumbles something about Zybers and fleshes have been reached. Yeah. <laughs> and laughing while doing it. This plant eats slivers and changelings. Clean up the earth of that, that sort of stuff. It's like a leech for those things. Hello, well, get wrecked, slivers. Your time. I mean, it's eight mana. Like, what do you expect? Although it could be someone's commander. Imagine coming to someone's, going to somebody's place. You know they play slivers, and then you decide to pull out the Morgoth Party Worm Commander deck, and it's it's literally just a sliver hate card. So one person plays slivers, one player plays changelings. Okay, it's fair. A little expensive. It's eight mana. What do you mean a little expensive? It does. Ah, what, like what part? What is like a fair mana value to you? Six? Seven? My question is, why is it an enchantment? I don't know. It was enchanted with the uh, the hunger to eat slivers. All right. Next up. We have Sarah's Hunt, which is brought to us by Miyuki. Thank you very much, Miyuki. We just gave your opponent the gate. Oh, I didn't catch this one. A card from earlier with the all creatures in control of commutative upkeep of one. I don't remember. I don't know the reference to that. But thank you to your super chat. We'll look at Sarah's Hunt, the black, black, black five generic artifact buyback of two. It's got Cascade. That is pretty interesting. This is just like an infinite cascading machine. So, for, effectively, for 10 mana, you can keep, I don't know, just rolling the dice and seeing what you're going to get off of this. You'll never be mana screwed again. 
or sorry, you'll never have to worry about lands again because every single turn, so long as you have 10 mana to keep playing this over and over again, uh, you can keep playing like the next spell off the top of your deck, then the next spell off the top of your deck. Very likely you're only gonna be playing sp one spell a turn though. Very, very doable. How do you cast this? With mana. Oh, they were referencing the green living death card. Ah, uh, right. Wait, this is an artifact? Oh, yeah! Hold on. Uh. Okay, all of a sudden I'm confused. How does this work? How do you buy back an artifact? What, what is what is the rules for buyback? Does it like no matter what? So like it I cast this thing. It's gonna have cascade. So it will still be on the stack. So as you pay an additional two as you cast the spell, if you do put this card into your hand as it resolves. I guess it works! Because like it, it is gonna cascade as it resolves, and it's gonna still be on the stack, which gives it the ability to come back to our hand. So for eight mana it would be in play. Yeah, I think it should still work even as a permanent. There's no reason that it shouldn't, especially as it has been worded. Yeah, it, somehow it just works. Life will find a way. I think it just goes right back to your hand. I mean, hey, it cascades. It's still on the stack. Buy back, boom, go right back to your hand, baby. Yeah, there's no reason why you can't buy back a permanent. See, that's design space. That is un that is untapped design space around here. I like it. It's cool. Okay, Banovsky. Thank you very much for your super chat. Shout out coffee uh coffeeers watching at work. My boss too. And with that, we will like take a look at another card. We'll look at Garrick. Garrick has gone frog. Someone played Oh no, it's a gecko. Someone played turn to frog and turned Garrick into a rider. I daring chrome. Uh, green 3 generic. It's a 4-4 four, four loyalty! What the hell's up with that? Uh, it's more creature than planeswalker. It is a white 1 generic. For white 1 generic, tap. Tap all rat creatures. Oh, it's anti-rat tech. Yeah, not my Morophon again. Or Pedgeman just getting beaten down by AI generated tech today. Why does a lizard have a motorcycle? It's probably an advertisement for Geico. Uh, Backspear, for war lore, for red and hoil up vortex, don't tecular, uh, three creatures. I'm daring Chrome. He's here to save you 15% on your motorcycle insurance. That's right. Uh, yeah, forget about all the rat creatures. Look how much I saved on my motorcycle insurance. Look how much I saved on my vehicles. What was it? The 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 winds of judge? The winds or the judge of wind? Yeah, it was the, the winds of judge. Look how much money I saved on the winds of judge insurance. Especially since it self-replicates itself. I thought my insurance would skyrocket to insure all my winds of judge, but actually it was not so bad. It wasn't so bad. Pla oh yeah, planeswalker, more like planes rider. Actually, you have two puns in one over there with the, you know, the, the planes walker. It requires planes to actually activate this ability. Okay, rat, me and my bill have the card. Yeah, something about Chrome. Maybe Google Chrome. I don't dare to use Google Chrome. I like this card. Actually, I mean, I have... <laughs> Sorry, the, the stupid loyalty makes no sense. So we have to disqualify it. I mean, well, it has a loyalty of 4-4. Four, four. It's power and toughness instead of a loyalty. This is literally like a planeswalker that can attack. I don't know, like if you attack the, th if you attack, is this like a weird hybrid between a creature and a planeswalker? So it's like a creature, but you can actually attack this creature directly and lower its toughness. Like its toughness doesn't regenerate. I don't know. Okay, this next one is brought to you by, uh, by brought to us by Red Eye. More cards, please. You got it. We're gonna take a look at uh, Silken Pummel Pummelable. Silken Pummelable. Uh, it looks like a gigantic. I don't know what to describe this creature. It's a green, green, two generic artifact equipment. I'm equip equipping this thing. It's so equipped for zero. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus one for each creature you control with a minus one, minus one counter on it. Pretty neat! 
It is definitely doable. Um, Arn formation about before with its own. I guess, like, it's a silken pummelable. Like, the equipment might be the coat or the scarf or something. Doable but useless. It's not that useless. It's four mana, and you have a bunch of minus one, minus one counters on your creatures. You can give one creature plus one, plus one. In fact, in fact, it goes infinite uh, with certain cards, right? So if you put a minus one, minus one counter on a creature, it will plus one, plus one this thing. So, like, you can put infinite minus one, minus one counters on creatures. You could put infinite minus one, minus one counters on uh, Devoted Druid. So it's a Devoted Druid combo. This could be a one mana card and still not be broken, I think. It's possible. So I think uh, Arm Formation about before with its own. That doesn't make any sense, but definitely doable card. Definitely a Future Sight design card. That's true. Feels very Future Sight-like. We got the Yargox, brought to us by Miyuki. Another one for the road. Thank you very much, Yu Miyuki. We have a red 2 generic, 0-1 null. Okay, it is a legendary creature, a demon soldier with island walk. All planes beated, attacking or blocking all creatures combat damage to you or another target creature. Now that chaos ensues. <laughs> That's our first. That is the most genuine chaos in Sue card in Sue's card of all day. Trash it to the to the Urank with this card. That's for sure. And it's purple. Hey, real uh, real people will wear purple. Null your top. <laughs> null your toughness. A bunch of word salad. Yargox is definitely hanging out with the party worm. True story. This thing votes for chaos. Okay, anyway. <laughs> Completely useless. Okay, Captain Rumia, my loyalty is the square root of minus two. Love that. And with that, Captain Rumia, take a look at another card. The present lieutenant. So the lieutenant gives presents to, I don't know, is this part of the party? Uh, we have a white, white, one, one human soldier. Pay three, tap. Get to draw a card. Then you may put a goblin card from your hand onto the battlefield. Pay two. Until end of turn, present lieutenant gains whenever you cast a green permanent spell. Target creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. This is just re a real card. So we pay, it's like a, it's a weird card to put in a goblin deck though. So you pay three tap, draw a card, then you can put a goblin card from your hand onto the battlefield. Is that it? Hold on, you can put like Moxus. You can put Muxus on the bow. It's fair, though. I mean, there are more dangerous, like, goblins that would ship, like, a goblin directly onto the battlefield. Fair at Zyber. It's, like, show and tell for goblins. <laughs> this is a Christmas card from Wizards of the Coast. That's very Christmas-like, in my opinion. This is a hard splash in goblins. I don't know if they're going to like splashing double white in this thing. It can cheat out Morophon. That's right. It can cheat out Morophon as well. A lot of Morophon tech and, uh, not Morophon tech, synergy, hate in this, uh, in this show. Showing goblins. Yeah. <laughs> uh, needs the, I need this in my Jeskai Kiki Jiki combo, but it doesn't combo directly with Kiki Jiki itself. I'm sure you can combo with some, with some other way. Okay, cool. Very cool card. Uh, Kronate, uh, Kronate with uh, another super chat pronounced oh, Kronate. Thank you very much for letting me know <laughs> where I made a fool myself. I took a guess at it. My, I took a guess at it. Kronate. Kronate has brought to uh, has brought to us Moker Laid Elemental. This is a four mana level up creature. Level up for a green. It starts at a star star, so it just dies instantly, right? Level two to four. If a land you control is on the battlefield, you win the game. Hold on, if this is undefined, is it, as if, is it infinite power or is it does it have zero power? I don't know. If a land you control is on the battlefield, you win the game. So oh yeah. I don't know if I don't know if we can even level it up based on state-based actions. Do we need to have like 
for example, do we need a uh, anthem in play, giving all our creatures plus one plus one, so that this thing can actually stay alive? So it's just a zero zero. Needs an anthem. All right, so it is okay. So there is a little bit of work to be done here. So turn two, an anthem, or turn three, turn four. Then we level it up for two green. And very likely we'll have a land on the battlefield and we can just win the game on the spot. Is this the fairest win game? Yes, it is definitely the fair. I, I would even say that this is playable. It costs four mana to cast. And then we still have to level it up on top of that. Like, it, And it's at least a two card combo. If not, it requires like more mana to sink into it. I think this is definitely fair. Although I would say if you are in... If someone plays any anthem effect on the battlefield, which are not that common in the game, like no one likes to play anthem effects, uh, I would be very weird. I'd be very terrified about this. Especially if it. Oh, actually, this would go pretty well in a human deck, right? So you play a human deck with hu natural human anthems. If there aren't, like, all humans get plus one, plus one, this thing can come to play and live, and then you can level it up to its victory. Also, it's, it is vulnerable. Like, if someone plays Moker Late Elemental, in response, you can blow up the anthem. It would just be completely fine. Just to shine his tide binder it. It doesn't even say level up as a at sorcery. You can just like level up in response and win anyway. Level up is supposed to be sorcery speed though. Maybe we just need the reminder text. Okay, I like it. It's cool. All right, next super chat coming on. Another one from Miy Miyuki. Never gonna let the show end. I'm adding one more because of that. Oh, you didn't like <laughs> you didn't like your last one was unplayable, huh? Completely stone cold unplayable. We got the temple. The temple of uh the temple of Doth. Temple of Doth is a one mana instant. Each player shuffles their hand and graveyard into their library. Is that it? What are we doing this for? Everyone at the table is like, oh god, the Temple of Doth. Do you know what? It's like justice if you mulliganed down hard. Imagine this. Imagine you're the only person that had to mulligan down to three. So you like mulligan down to three. You look at your seven card hands like, I got a Plains. I got a Temple of Doth. You know what? It's time to get even. Uh, I'm going to be playing the Temple of Doth. And then all of a sudden, everyone else can feel my pain. Can't just play- Oh yeah, you could also do that. If you just play your whole hand- You play your whole hand first. So I go first, planes. Everyone starts with an empty hand. No, no, no. Uh... There we go. Sir Fireman Bob says, just play your whole hand first. So go like, I guess, planes, soul ring... Lion's Eye Diamond, Temple of Doth, and then everyone has nothing. Everyone's in complete top deck mode. Oh, anti thoracle tech! That's true! So someone tries to thoracle for victory, I have a response. The Temple of Doth! Yeah, vomit your hand to Doth. So this is like, well, it's very unfair at the beginning of the game, but it's actually very far fair if someone tries to win unfairly. With, uh, with Thoracal. <laughs> Shuffle their entire hand and graveyard back into their library. Oh, that might not work very well. Like, if they exiled their library, then it doesn't work at all. <laughs> like, like... Richard is like, looking at this card is better than watching Lord of the Rings. Like, what the hell am I looking at right now? Hand destruction with no madness triggers for opponents. Yep, that's right. You don't discard your hand. They just get shuffled away. I don't know. Where are we on this card? I guess it's just can't... It's not printable. It's just, like, too unfair at the beginning of the game. Very doable, though. Very doable card. Okay, we have our next... Next one from Miyuki. And now I have to do another one because it's the 20th SC? Don't know what that means. But for this super chat, we'll look at Maraud in Vusion of Angel. Maraud Infusion of Angel is a red, red, four generic, two, three human rogue with reach and death touch. Ward, discard your hand. That's quite a huge downside. Maraud enters the battlefield with two plus one plus one counters on it, so it's a four, five creature for six mana, and its power and toughness are each equal to the number of creature cards in your graveyard. Why did they do this? 
They literally do this all the time. It's like, okay, they give a creature with stats, and then and now the AI is like, oh, do you know what? Those stats are changeable. We'll just make it like this now instead. Sick art looks fair. Yeah, it looks it looks fair on the art. It's got a lot going on, but I like it. The AI is trolling us. Does the AI just love one with nothing or what? <laughs> Talking about the last card. Weak but Zybers. Isn't that weak? It's like six mana, you have reached death touch. Someone has to discard their hand to kill it. It's like fair. it's totally doable. It's totally fair. I don't know if I don't I don't know if the rules would allow this. Power and toughness. I guess. Ugh. Yeah, so if like someone plays dress down, then I guess by default it becomes a two three. Otherwise, it's power and toughness are each equal to the number of creature cards in your in in your graveyard specifically. Got to fill up that graveyard. <laughs> it's the ultra goif, the ultra goif that only looks at creature cards. Yeah, it still has plus one. Oh yeah, it will come into play with plus one plus one no matter what, uh, unless it's like a oh no, it enters the battle when it enters the battlefield. Oh, and, and no, sorry. Maraud enters the battlefield with two plus one plus one counters. So it's not when it enters the battlefield. It just comes into play with two. So even if it's a zero, zero, it's, a, it's at least going to be a two, two. So it's never going to be worse than that. What is the power and toughness if there's nothing in the graveyard? I think it's a two, two if there's nothing in the graveyard. Uh, and then if it loses all abilities, it's a two, three. I think. I don't know for sure. These cards are weird. It's a weirdo card. We've got like four cards like this today. It's like, okay, it's power and, it has power and toughness. Oh, by the way, it's power and toughness are actually equal to something else. Funny stuff. And that's it for today. That's it for AI generated cards. We love this show. I love this show. Oh, you'll you'll love this show too. Now, as you usually we do this show, 11 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. Be here for Coffee and MTG. I'm warning you, I think I'm gonna be changing the schedule to 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. So for anyone who is uh, can't make it here at their lunchtime or whatever, that might be a better schedule for you. So I'm just giving fair warning. We might change to 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Thanks to everyone who supports the channel. If you're a patron on Patreon, a member on YouTube, or you super chat to prolong the show or also be part of the show and help other people be part of the show, thank you very much for your support. That's why I keep doing it every morning. It's brought to you by users like you. But also, it is created by users like you. Thank you so much to Toads, Binovsky, Oldboy, Erlen, Ferginka, Phoenix, Familiar, Lyrical Star. We've got Kevk, Dominic, Beanpot, Hostile Fun, Erlen, Kev. Uh, I think I got Kevk. Fricade! Because you guys are the show, my coffee crew. So as usual, keep brewing up them coffees and we'll keep brewing up the magic. Take care of yourselves and I will see you at the next cup. <laughs>